Well, hello there, my friends, and welcome back. My name is Stephanie Safarian, and you're listening to episode 494 of Sustainable Minimalists. This is a listener-supported show about eco-friendly, intentional minimalist living. On today's show, we are attempting to streamline those never-ending household tasks. Now, if you are just popping in, you're a free subscriber, your episode today is about streamlining meal planning, the meal planning problem. We'll get to that in a minute, but it's a big problem, isn't it? (laughs) If you are a paid supporter of this show, your episode is, yes, about streamlining meal planning, but it's also about streamlining and simplifying your laundry routine as well. So to my free listeners, I can no longer rely on ad revenue alone to support this show. And so I so hope that if you love this show, you've been listening for years, I hope that now, right this second, is the time you consider supporting it with $5 a month so that the show may continue to exist. $5 a month is less than a latte at Starbucks, y'all, okay? So let's put that there. If you... Tend to listen to the show on Apple Podcasts. You can subscribe there. There's a very easy link to do so. And you can also do a three-day free trial. So you can listen to the subscriber-only audio today and a free trial. If you like it, you can continue on subscribing. If not, you can cancel. (laughs) But if you listen anywhere other than Apple Podcasts, there's a link in this week's show notes to subscribe for $5 a month or $50 a year. And thank you so much. If you subscribe there, new episodes on release day will go straight to your inbox. Those episodes are, of course, also ad-free, so no awkward interruption in the middle of an episode. As this show moves forward, as time continues to tick on, more and more content is going to have to be put behind a paywall uh, because, again, ad revenue is no longer paying my bills. (laughs) In a perfect world, All of you will become supporters of this show. I will no longer be beholden to companies and corporations and ad revenue. A 100% listener-supported show means you never have to hear an ad again. How great would that be? So all that to say, if you're a free subscriber, we're talking about meal planning. And if you're a paid supporter, we're talking about meal planning and laundry today. Now, I think an awful lot about how busy and stressed out most of us are, myself included. I am so overwhelmed with all the tasks of living most days. I don't feel like I ever have enough free time. When I dig a little deeper and ask myself, well, where on earth is my free time going? What am I doing with my time? What am I spending my time on? I realize that I, and perhaps you as well, I'm likely spending an awful lot of my time as well as an awful lot of my precious mental energy worrying about and juggling the non-negotiable household tasks. These non-negotiable household tasks, they don't take much skill. They don't take a degree, let's say, uh, but they eat away at our free time and our free mental space. So I'm talking about meal planning. I'm talking about laundry, cleaning, doing the dishes, making the school lunches, taking out the trash. These are just some of those household non-negotiables that do not have an end date, right? They're never done. Take laundry, for example. You could spend your entire Sunday afternoon getting caught up on your home's laundry, but by Tuesday, You're right back where you started. These non-negotiable household tasks, they are never ending. And that's part of the reason why, or at least part of the reason why I think we're all overwhelmed and stressed out. We can never get ahead. (laughs) There are tasks in our lives that are ours and ours alone for whatever reason. Of course, for those of us with partners and children, we need to be delegating. Of course. We also need to know our own worth and we need to advocate for equity in our romantic partnerships, of course. I'll just say for my women listening in heterosexual relationships, how annoying is it that when men help out, they're praised? And even the phrase help out feels obnoxious, doesn't it? Because helping assumes that one person's in charge of the task and you're just 
you know, taken a little bit off the plate. Even the term help out is not equitable, in my opinion. But comedian Ali Wong, maybe you know her, maybe you love her. She said in one of her specials that, quote, the standards for dads are so low that they get so much praise for doing so little, end quote. And I say all that to say it's not to rag on the dads listening, but it is to say and to remind us all that women have shouldered the invisible work and the mental loads of their homes for centuries. And guess what? Everybody except women benefits when women do all the work. (laughs) And because the patriarchy as this whole overarching umbrella, the patriarchy definitely benefits. And so nothing changes long term. So yeah, I'm getting a little cynical. My mom rage is starting to (laughs) wake up and rear its head. But back to those non-negotiables for a minute. Modern life is filled with many of them. They simply must get done. And so it behooves you and me to get them done with as little time and as little effort as possible. So that's what we're doing today. My free subscribers, we're doing meal planning. I got a great, great idea for you to simplify that task. You do it once and you never have to do it again. We're going to do that in a second. And for my subscribers, my supporters, thank you so much for supporting my work, by the way. We're going to do meal planning and then we're going to talk about laundry. So let's talk about meal planning and let's start first by by getting some perspective. There was a time not so long ago in historical terms when nearly all people on this planet had to spend the vast majority of their free time producing food so that our families would have enough to eat, right? A lot of time, a lot of hours in a day was spent producing food so that human beings, our families, would not go hungry, But these days, we've modernized, we've industrialized the food system. So you and I, we are in some ways liberated, have more free time for new activities. And yet, while feeding our families no longer demands an awful lot of physical work, feeding our families and ourselves, frankly, continues to demand an awful lot of mental gymnastics. We're going to simplify that mental gymnastics routine today. So yes, there are meal services that try to simplify the mental gymnastics for you, but those meal services, they're expensive. (laughs) The cost varies depending on the number of servings, the type of ingredients, the quality of the food, the level of customization. But on average, Families are spending between $50 on the low, low end to over $150 per week on meal prep services. Now, I just, for my own curiosity, I looked up Factor because Factor was a previous sponsor of this podcast. They sent me some meals to try out, and I must admit, Factor meals were really good. (laughs) Like, they were the best tasting, in, in my opinion. So I looked up Factor. Factors meals are $11 each without discount. So for a family of four, I have a family of four, that's $44 a night before taxes for the four of us to eat dinner. I know because I am the one who shops and cooks for this family. I know that if I put in a little front end work on meal planning, I could feed my family, depending on what I serve, for anywhere between like $8 and $20 total. Total. So instead of $44, I could probably feed my family on a fourth of that if I had the mental space to meal plan, which I do. We're going to get into that in a minute. I'll also say too, there's so much environmental waste when it comes to those meal prep services. So for me, the financial cost plus the environmental impact with all that single-use plastic means that my values just are not aligned with using a meal prep service each week. Here or there in a pinch, sure, but it just can't and it just won't be my go-to strategy for me personally. If meal prep services are working for you in your home and you're not stressed about meals (laughs) and you're not going to the poorhouse because you can afford it, then keep doing what's working, absolutely. But meal prep services do not work for my household. So I'm going to the grocery store every week. And by the way, I'm also aware that there are services like Instacart that do the grocery shopping for me. But again, for me personally, 
I like picking out my own produce. Buying what's on sale when I'm at the store doesn't work either because when I'm buying what's on sale according to my whims, that's nothing more than impulse shopping at the end of the day, right? Like, would you go to the mall? Would my minimalist listening go to the mall without a plan, without a list, and just buy on whims? No, that's impulse shopping. So why would we do that when we go to the supermarket? We need a list. We need a plan. So here's the plan. (laughs) 11 minutes into this show. This is what I started doing about six months ago, and it has changed my life. So are you ready? Okay. I want you to streamline meal planning in your home so you don't need a meal prep service, so you don't need Instacart. And I want you to create a 28-day meal rotation, and then I want you to work through it each month. Now, that sounds scary. It is not scary. I'm going to tell you how to do it in a second, but I also want to say I created a 28-day or what I consider a one-month meal rotation for my family. I did it all in under an hour, and it took me an hour because I was also cooking dinner as I was doing it. So this is not hard. You can do this, and if you do the upfront work, you will save yourself hours and hours and hours each week going forward. It's a one-and-done thing. So I want you to start by getting four pieces of lined paper, four pieces of lined paper and a pencil. I suggest a pencil because you might need to erase. On each paper, I want you to label at the top one, two, three, and four, because you have four pieces of paper. Lay them all out in front of you. I also want you to take these papers and fold them in half the long way. So you're going to have two columns, one on the left and one on the right. Again, each paper is a different week. So in the left-hand column, way on the side in the margin, I want you to write numbers one through seven and space them out evenly. So one, skip three lines, two, skip three lines, three, all the way down through seven. Those sevens are your seven dinner meals for that week. Okay. So I'll, I'll say too, I'm coming out with a blog post tomorrow on this strategy and I have pictures of uh, my 28 day meal plan. So If this is confusing to you, just stay tuned for tomorrow and I'll have visuals. But okay, so you've got that. Now I want you to go get out your favorite recipes, your favorite cookbooks, and lay them out in front of you as well. On each paper, you are going to fill in those numbers one through seven that are running down the margin of your papers with different meals. Now, as you're looking through your recipes and your cookbooks for your favorite recipes and you're placing them in the weeks... Do so with a little bit of intention. Like for me, I'm not going to have a week full of pasta dishes, right? I'm not going to have a whole Mexican week, but we do tend to eat Mexican food a lot. So tacos, enchiladas, burritos, um, sheet pan tacos, like we eat a lot of Mexican flavors. So put one Mexican themed dinner on each paper, put one pasta dish on each paper. If you eat fish, maybe you have you know, the fish that's on sale at the supermarket once on one paper. So how do I do this in my home? In my home, we have items that we eat every single week without fail. I make homemade pizza once a week. So every week I'm going to have on each paper, on all four papers, I'm going to have pizza listed. Okay, I'm going to just write down pizza next to the number. Don't worry about the other column yet. We'll get to that in a minute. So let's just take week one. Okay, next to number one is pizza. Next to number two is sheet pan tacos. Next to number three is lentil soup with cheese, like raw cheese and crackers. Okay, number four is going to be leftovers because we always have enough food for leftovers night. Okay, so you're going to fill in your paper with seven things. If you always have a leftover night, you only have six things. If you have something like pizza that you eat every week, you only have to come up with five meals. (laughs) That's it. Five. Okay. So go through your recipes, go through your cookbooks, and find those tried and true recipes that most people like that are easy-ish to make <laughs> and um, are satisfying, right? Like so, so these are weeknight meal plans. I caution you against writing down really time or labor-intensive recipes. My family absolutely loves a good eggplant parmesan. 
However, in no reality am I going to be frying eggplant in my kitchen on a Tuesday night after gymnastics <laughs> um, to, to cook this amazing eggplant parm for my family. It's not going to happen. So eggplant parm is one of those like special meals. It's not going to go on a weeknight meal plan. Now, after you have all four papers filled out with your meals for those four weeks, we're going to tackle that second column. Now, before we tackle that second column, which is going to be your shopping list, spoiler alert, I want to just say that writing out four weeks worth of meals, that alone is going to help you immensely with your mental load with regard to choosing what to eat throughout the week, right? Like how many of us just stress out about what are we eating for dinner tonight, right? Like you never have to worry about that again because you have four different weekly meal plans. You never have to worry about it again. How exciting is that? Okay, but now we're going to take it a step further because for me, figuring out what to eat is a stress, but also making sure that I have all the ingredients on hand to execute the meal plan is another source of stress. So we're going to eliminate two sources of stress with these papers. I also want to say too, if you are in the habit of, okay, you know what you're going to cook, but you don't have an essential ingredient, so you just run to the store, we're going to stop that right now because it's a waste of your time. How long does it take you to run to the store? It probably takes you at least 30 minutes. If you do a little bit of planning on the upfront and you know you have all the ingredients because you made your shopping list at the forefront and you only went to the store once that week, you're saving yourself so much precious time. So let's go to that second column. We're in the right-hand column of each of your papers. You're going to write down the ingredients that you need. Not all of the ingredients, so I'll talk about that in a minute, but you're going to write down the ingredients that you don't necessarily always have on hand. So let's talk about my sheet pan tacos, for example. You might not know what a sheet pan taco is. No big deal. If you want the recipe, I'll give it to you. Great vegetarian meal. Anyways, <laughs> there are items, there are ingredients that I need to cook sheet pan tacos that I do not always have on hand. Ingredients like soft shell tortillas. I do not always have those in my fridge. Black beans. I almost always have black beans on hand. I will say I have dried, I have canned, but I'm going to write it down just in case because you can't make this recipe without black beans. So I'm going to write that down. Sour cream. That's another one. All right. So you're having like a taco night and you don't have any sour cream. That is a big fat bummer. So I'm going to write sour cream on my ingredients list. I am not going to write out every single ingredient though. I'm not going to write down cheese because cheese is something I always have in the fridge. I'm not going to write down onion because even though this recipe calls for an onion, onions are something that I always have. Okay. So in that second column, I want you to write down the ingredients that correspond with the recipe, the thing you're cooking. So next to it, you're going to write the ingredients so that you can successfully execute the recipe that you wrote down in the first column. The goal is that you're going to have a shopping list on that right-hand column so that you never have to make a shopping list again. I know. Isn't that genius? I know. I'm tapping myself on the back. <laughs> it's so good. Okay. So then you're going to go to the next meal you've written down, whatever it is. Write down the ingredients that you know you need to have on hand to successfully execute the recipe. When you're all done with all seven of those meals, those dinners for the week, on the right-hand column, you are going to have your shopping list, and you're never going to have to make it again. Now, how does this look in my house? I instructed you to make a four-week meal plan, so a month. I actually did a six-week meal plan, six. So I have six papers, each with seven meals, 42 meals. I put all six of my papers in a tiny little half-inch binder. And so now when I go to the grocery store, I bring my binder. I buy all the items on that chosen week's ingredients list because it's already written out there. And I also buy all the stuff that I buy every week that I know I need to have, stuff like bananas and almond milk and orange juice and coffee, like all the stuff that I buy on a weekly basis. I know that stuff by heart. I do not need to write it down. I buy it on autopilot. But here we go. Voila. <laughs> we have just simplified the meal planning. It's done. We just simplified the 
ingredients buying. You have your list there. You just purchase what's on the list. And now step three is to create the meals. Perhaps you do some meal prepping. We've done episodes on that in the past. I tend to on a perfect weekend, spend one to two hours in the kitchen on a Saturday or Sunday and just prep the ingredients for the meals that week. I find that saves me stress um, during the week. But there we go. We just streamlined meal planning. I hope this works for you. And if you try it, let me know how it goes. I will say on a personal level, I still have to do the cooking, right? So there's still labor that needs to be done. But the stress associated with feeding my family is so much less now that I did this one hour while I was cooking dinner of upfront work. So what's my final word today? My final word is that it's the non-negotiable responsibilities in our home. They are the reason we're all feeling like we're busy but never accomplishing anything. The way to fight back against that is to streamline. So I really hope my meal planning streamlining suggestion works for you. Again, let me know if it works for you. To my subscribers, to my supporters, stay with me. We're talking about we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it with laundry next. If you're not a subscriber, please consider becoming one. If you sign up today, I'll send you the extended version of this episode with laundry included. Just send me a quick email and I'll get that done for you. Thank you for considering to support this work. We'll be back on Tuesday. I'll see you then. We're talking about minimalist life lessons. I'll see you Tuesday for that and take care.